I started Axiom with the intent of building a human presence in space. We saw an opportunity to build a commercial space station, given where NASA and the partnership were headed to in the future. It made it very clear they were not building the next uh, low Earth orbit platform, that they were going to cede that to commercial. But more importantly, they said, we have a lot of need for a platform in low Earth orbit. So when this opportunity came up and nobody was raising their hand to say, we'll do it, uh, a big push for me was, hey, this is, has to happen for us to be successful. This is where the torch has to be picked up. So Dr. Cam Gaffarian, the co-founder of Axiom Space, and I got together and decided we would go build that commercial space station. We worked closely with NASA to get them to allocate opportunities to go to the ISS. And they've allocated two so far, both of which we've been allowed to serve. So AX1 was the first. AX2 coming up next year is the second one. The purpose of the AX-1 mission was to be our first test of our role uh, coordinating with NASA on the International Space Station. It's a good way for us to test all our ground procedures and our interfaces with Houston's mission control and all the other mission controls around the world and integrate our mission into theirs. But it is primarily for us to be a precursor mission to get our processes and procedures for communicating with the crew how we want to timeline things for the activities of the day. So it's really an important precursor that we're building up to so that by 2024, when we have our first module up there, we will be able to be ready to get rolling immediately. We're building a space station that will house more people than the International Space Station. When we've got our first couple, three modules up, will be able to support eight people. The ISS can support seven. So it became very clear that we should practice together with the smaller contingent of crew over time so that when our station arrived and we started having long duration passengers on board that we could work seamlessly with NASA. So that was the original genesis of these flights, the first of which was AX-1. Over time, we became kind of clear that there's a market for it as well. It's really exciting for me to be a part of these precursor missions leading up to what I hope will be a very exciting change in the way low Earth orbit is viewed, not just as governments going into space, but as commercial entities going into space. As commander on Axiom 2 mission, we will be flying up the second Axiom flight to the International Space Station. I've flown in space three times for 665 days and I still want to go back. <laughs> I look forward to the expansion of space and being a part of that process of change. Axiom, through what we're doing with the Axiom station and the rest of the infrastructure that we hope to build, are really looking at taking uh, commercial space to a global audience and a global customer base. We're really building a platform that is not only sustainable, but scalable as we bring more and more of the partners of the world into the space arena. And it's really about bringing the number of partners into space to a greater number so that we have more uh, countries and more players in this exploration effort but it's also about diversifying the economies and things that we can do in space as well. And that requires players from all countries. That's a big focus for us, bringing more countries to, into orbit, not just to utilize our platform in low Earth orbit, but to help them grow as a nation technically, advance their capabilities so they can participate with a broader community of nations that explores beyond low Earth orbit. It's not about space companies. It really is about all the other companies that will be able to utilize the microgravity environment to build a better product to enhance our lives here on Earth. Microgravity allows us to create much stronger alloys, faster fibers, it allows us to create pharmaceutical products that can't be created uh, on the ground in a gravity environment. These are not things that space companies do. These are things that automobile companies and plane companies and pharmaceutical companies, and you just list it, the, the list can go on and on of products that can benefit from this. Most of a commercial space market uh, traditionally defined is one around satellite and satellite services. But what we're really talking about is bringing new markets to bear that are enabled by human spaceflight. And so what we do is really creating those first opportunities for some of these new economies to emerge. I entered this career and this job hopeful on the idea of putting hundreds, if not thousands of humans in space. And I really think we're on the cusp of that time frame. But I think we do that on the backbone of a permanent economy that creates that justification for people living and working in space. Because without that, it just becomes too expensive to fly. But when you can create the economic activity that drives the need for humans in space, you create the cities in space of the future that really justify people being there. 
I think Axiom's primary objective is to promote making space accessible, whether that's to industries and countries that haven't had access before, and individual. Commercializing low Earth orbit is going to make space much more accessible for everyone. And I, I think being a part of that is really exciting and why I chose to join Axiom in this big endeavor.